Hi, Curtis here, creator of A Masked Avenger, The Invincible Man and the Quitters. This is my origin story, how I came to create what I'm passionate about. So I grew up and spent most of my life in Steinbeck, Manitoba in Canada. When I was young, I watched a lot of cartoons, particularly The Simpsons was my favorite cartoon, which I feel now as a creator really gave me a strong base for humor and the desire to be more funny in my cartoons. That being said, I also did like Batman the Animated Series, Spider-Man the Animated Series, and the X-Men series growing up as far as cartoons and things that inspired me. I also watched a fair bit of Freakazoid and Animaniacs, again leaning more towards that parody side of things. I would say that Freakazoid was a pretty big inspiration for some of my earlier work as a teenager. I also did have a small collection of comics. I didn't have much of a budget for comics, just a little bit of allowance here and there. So I really mostly bought based on the covers and how good they looked. I wasn't really into reading or the story so much. I just really liked the art and the drawings. So if a comic book had great art, I would probably buy it just for that reason. When I was young, I really started drawing because of my brother. He was a pretty good artist even from young and he had a four year head start on me. And so I was always trying to kind to keep up with him as far as art. I remember that by the time I was in grade two, I was already drawing better than most adults could. I remember drawing a picture of Wolverine when I was young and it looked pretty good for a grade two, I would say. Most of my drawings throughout my life, especially in the pen and paper days, um, were a lot of pencils and then if I would get around to it, inks. I rarely colored and never did backgrounds. So it was often just a pencil with a white background or an ink with a white background. I did develop this into a better style when I got older. I didn't really care for the pencil marks a lot, so what I would do is I would draw and ink my drawing, and then I would trace over it for a final, whether in pencils or in ink, and then I'd have a nice clean drawing. And if I did pen and paper today, I would probably still do that as well. The nice thing in school is that because I was such a good artist, I got out of a lot of reading and essay writing. Often there was group projects, and if it involved a title page or some sort of drawing, I would have a line of people wanting me to be on that team and I would just have to do the drawing I wouldn't have to read the book or write the essay at all I would do the drawing and they would do all the rest of the work and we'd get a good grade usually <laughs> when I was 14 years old I started to pick up the guitar again following in my brother's footsteps a lot of the music I listened to at the time was inspired by him and what he liked and he had also recently started playing guitar at that time so I picked up guitar as well I excelled really quickly at it being self-motivated and learning through tablature to the point where I was probably one of the better guitarists in my school. When I was young, I was a really shy kid, especially into my young teenage years. As I got older, some of my jobs involved uh, talking to customers or training. So there was a lot more talking involved. And uh, into my 20s, I started doing a lot of public speaking and preaching. And so I really not necessarily became an extrovert, but learned how to public speak pretty well, especially with very little notes. Uh, a lot of my preaching was done just off the top of my head with a very, very basic outline just so I'd remember what I wanted to talk about. I also played a lot of music on stage in talent shows and such things, so it really helped me come out of my shell a little bit. Again, not that I'm an extrovert. I'm probably more of an introvert, but uh, it helped me develop my voice acting voice. But from a creative perspective, unfortunately, my 20s brought along a creative lull, especially into my late 20s, where I didn't really create anything. I also didn't watch any movies or TV at the time. Coming out of those non-creative years, I felt like I had a burst of inspiration. I took a renewed look at Mast Avenger and started developing a story for him. This is also when I developed Body and The Invincible Man, but I never really did anything solid with them, even though I had all these ideas. I did jot a lot of the ideas down, but I didn't take them anywhere other than The Invincible Man, where I started working on a bit of a novel. I spent most of my adult years, probably almost since the time I was 14 actually, dealing with mental illness in varying levels of severity. And there were many years where I dealt with it alone with God being my only help through it all. But then I met Kara and I got married to her. It was around that time uh, Kara asked me what I wanted in life. After thinking about it over a weekend, I really wanted to quit my job and pursue my dreams. And that's a core theme for North Stream Creations is that we ask ourselves and ask people what do they honestly want if they're 100% honest with themselves. And so we discussed it on a Sunday night and Monday morning I went and I quit my job of 14 years. It was a good paying job and decided to try make a go at it. I always thought if I failed, give myself a year and I'll go back to work if it doesn't work out. It was amazing to be able to have that experience and start creating full time. It did take me a few months to figure out exactly what I wanted. I'd given my book to my brother and nephew to read and they both said it kind of read like the Bible. So I kind of checked that off the list 
list as something I didn't want to pursue. Then I tried to pursue making a comic, specifically of a Masked Avenger. The only problem is I couldn't consistently draw him, and having to draw that many backgrounds would have been a lot of work, and it wasn't an ideal format. Also realizing that most people don't read, and even fewer read comic books. It just didn't seem like the place I wanted to be. I then started trying to make audiobooks, and I thought, how much harder would it be to animate? And after reverse engineering what I've seen on YouTube from some different channels, I was able to create my own animations. The awesome thing after all those years of not being creative and helping others with their creative projects, I was finally able to find what I was passionate about. It was kind of nice to be able to take a lot of my skills that I learned throughout the years and be able to incorporate them all into one project. I was able to take my art skills as an artist, I was able to use my public speaking in my voice acting, and I was able to take my skills as a musician and understanding sound and incorporate them into the soundtracks and theme songs. Also, another thing I did quite a bit uh, since my teenage years was work on computers, so that really gave me the skill to learn how to use the software I need to create these animations in the first place. So it's amazing if you can take all the skills you've learned and combine them into one singular project. I was also trying to be self-aware at the time of what I was able to do. I knew I'd have to make most of these cartoons almost completely on my own, aside from possibly some voice acting. It's a lot of time to commit and ask someone to commit to it, so I knew I'd have to do it by myself. But I also wanted to produce a lot of content, so I had to come up with an animation style that was simple and quick, and that I could do on my own producing content at least on a monthly basis. It's kind of good to know your limitations as well and what you're capable of and what you actually want to do. I knew I wouldn't be having a lot of fight scenes, that it would be a lot of dialogue, and so my simplistic animation style really suits that. I found though that I'm not really an artist kind of artist, or I'm not a musician kind of musician, and I'm not a passionate public speaker. But what I really love and what I'm really passionate about is being able to tell these stories I create. And it just turns out that animation right now is the best format for me to tell those stories. This has been my origin story on how I create what I'm passionate about. Seize the day and create something you are passionate about.